Hey, this is Wendy with Loaves and Dishes, and today I'm going to show you how to use a manual hand crank food mill. It is so easy to do. All you need is the right equipment. You can see here I have an OXO brand food mill. I've had this thing for years and years. It is so easy to use. It has these non-slip rubber feet. Um, you can see the inside surface is a nice heavy duty stainless steel. It comes with these three straining discs. Um, the one in my right hand is for getting the skin and seeds off of things. That one's for making juice. And this one's for more things like jam and things that you want to have a heavy pulp in. This is the hand crank part. It's easy to put on, it's easy to use, and easy to clean. So that's why I totally recommend this particular brand of uh, hand crank food mill. I haven't used any other brands, so um, I can't really give you advice about those, but you can see these strainers fit right in there. They're perfectly fitted. They have these little knobs in there, and um, you're probably gonna make the mistake, just like I did, of putting it in there that way. But look, it says right here, this side up. So even though that's kind of counterintuitive, that's how it goes with the with the dome side up and it snaps right down into place. And then that little post from the food mill from the part you turn goes in the hole. And then you just snap that under on that side, pull the thing back, put it under, and look at that, you're ready to go. Um, here in just a second, I'm gonna show you what happens if you turn, like if you did it like I did it initially with that thing upside down. Um, I'm gonna show you what happens. And I had to take the sound out <laughs> of this video, but it makes a horrible scraping sound. You can't turn it at all. It, it just doesn't work. So it's impossible to put it in. The, see, it won't even snap into place. It just won't even go because it's not attached at the bottom correctly. Um, but if you try to make, like force it like I just did, then it won't turn and it's loud and it just won't work. So if you find that yours is not working, maybe you've got the blade upside down. <laughs> So when you turn it around right, it is so easy to use. That just snaps right in place. You see that? Okay. Now the other thing you're going to need to have when you're getting ready to mill something is you're going to need several large kitchen bowls. Now I've put the juicing strainer in mine. Um, I'm just going to show you what happens here. So see that? I've got a bowl that those rubber feet fit right on top of. It doesn't slip around or anything like that. That's why I like this Oxo brand. I'm going to show you what happens when you put chunks of, this is watermelon. I'm making watermelon juice. See how it doesn't crush those up at all. It just catches them and gives them a merry-go-round ride. <laughs> That's, you don't want that. Um, so instead, what you need to do is crush those chunks of fruit or vegetable or whatever it is you're trying to whir around in your food mill. Now, if you have something hard like apples or carrots that um, you're wanting to crush, then you're going to have to cook them first. In this case, though, watermelon's pretty soft. So I'm, you can see here I'm using a food mash, a potato masher, and I'm just gonna mash it into more manageable chunks and then put that into my food mill. Um, now if I had a lot of seeds in here or if it was something like tomatoes that had skin, then I would have to use the larger, um, the, the sieve with the larger holes in the bottom of it. But for this purpose, I can um, use this. And you go forward a few strokes and then you go backwards a few strokes. Um, what going backwards does is it scrapes off the blade, cleans off the blade so that um, you can capture more pieces underneath and squeeze the juice out. You can see kind of to the left there that I'm getting a good amount of juice out. And just FYI, an entire watermelon, large watermelon, yields about a gallon and a half of juice. <laughs> There's a little piece of trivia that uh, you might need at some point in the future. Then you see I'm just scraping down the sides, kind of like you do your KitchenAid with a rubber spatula and um, giving them another press around. And then when um, I can't get any more juice out, what I'll do is take the leftover little pieces and dump them into the trash. Don't put that stuff down your kitchen drain, even if you have um, a chopper in there because your line will clog. I, I have about 30 yards of, of new um, 
drain in my house to prove it. So don't do that. So see, when you're ready to dump it, you just take the blade out, dump it, and then start again. So it took me maybe, oh, I'm gonna say 45 minutes to juice an entire watermelon, so it's not that bad. Of course, if you're having to cook what you're doing first, then it could take longer and you have to be very careful because you could get burned. So um, if you're doing that, be super, super careful. Usually you're gonna use this larger whole sieve first and I don't think I've ever um, done anything with the food mill when I haven't had to double process it. So use this first to remove the large seeds and the skin. It's going to give you a lot of pulp in your um, product. So if you want something like juice, then you have to um, run it back through the smaller hole. I'm not sure what happened to my camera angle here, <laughs> but when you're using this larger hole sieve, you'll see um, you twist it around and then the um, the pieces kind of get caught under that and you run it forward for a bit and then you run it backwards to get them up off of the grate. So see how it just captured most everything underneath it and there's a spring on there so it'll keep rising up until um, everything's underneath it. You probably have to use your spatula to scrape down the sides but that's how you know when you're twisting it like that and then no more juice is coming out and you can hear the juice sprinkling underneath you'll know that you um, have gotten everything out of it that you can get and again don't put that stuff down your sink um, so once you do that then you're going to pour the juice you get back like change the strainer to that small hole strainer and then pour the juice back through and let it um, strain through there and that'll get all of that heavy pulp um, it's not going to get all of it, I'll just be honest, but it'll get all of, most of the heavy pulp out and all the seeds, and you'll be less, left with a nice juice. So, um, you can see I just put a few pieces in there, and I ended up with that amount of juice. Here it is, just straining through the small hole strainer. Hey, this is Wendy. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you'll join Sarah and I on our mother.